along, Emily Michaels thought she was going to get away with it. Sooner or later, somebody who knew Draper was going to spot him. I've got a feeling that lady's not playing with a full deck. Living in a dream world, huh? Yeah. What happened to those two characters who were holding Draper? Well, Frankie Palmer's down at headquarters eating everything in sight. We had to send her for some more sandwiches <laughs> to keep her quiet. Larry Watts has been quieted permanently. What did you find out about him? Well, I think it's safe to assume that those are the two that escaped from that armed robbery, the one that Kirk Michael was killed in nine years ago. That makes sense. Where's April and Draper Scott? They're in there. They're together. Emily Michaels? She was here a few minutes ago. Is she under medical care? Gave her something sedative. I don't know. I wonder where she got to. No. I'm going to need to get a statement from her, of course. Well, she'll be around someplace. She can't have wandered too far. Hey, we've been looking all over for you guys. What's up, Gail? Don't you guys know what's happening? Wow. There's a woman standing out on the ledge on the sixth floor right around the corner. What? A jumper? A jumper named Emily Michaels. Oh, Out there. Let me come outside. And no, me. no, you stay away. If you touch me, I'll jump. I okay, swear I will. Okay, okay. Stay where you are. Don't move. Nobody's gonna make you do anything you don't want to do. Just stay there. So what'd she say? I only heard the last part. Oh, same thing all jumpers say. She doesn't want to talk to anybody. She doesn't want to see anybody. And she doesn't want to come inside. Oh, she must be terrified out in that ledge. She is. She's afraid to move. I hope she's afraid to jump. Sometimes some of them do, she. Is the rescue team here yet? They should be out front. All right, I better get down and talk to them. Look, why don't you talk to her? You're a woman. Maybe you make a difference. I'll try. You ever talked to Jumper Down before? Yeah, I did once. Emily? Why, why are all those people down there looking at me? It's okay, Emily. Don't worry about them. Just think about yourself. I don't care about myself. I had made all these plans for my life. It was going to be so wonderful. It can still be wonderful, Emily. You know, everybody has disappointments. I've, I've lost everything. You know, I lost somebody once, not too long ago. And I think I probably felt just the way you feel right now. Oh, you couldn't possibly. Oh, I don't know about that. I cried so many tears, I didn't think I had any left. Emily? I talked to my friends. It made a big difference. So why don't you let me be your friend? Okay? Come on inside, talk to you. Oh, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to live. 
why, Emily. Please talk to me. Tell me why. All my plans, my whole future. You're all gone. You can make new plans, Emily. Oh, there's nothing left for me. This is really the best thing for me to do. Here, together. We're always going to be together. Don't you forget that. Me? You're the one with the rotten memory, remember? <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's all starting to come back to me now. All starting to come back, and I know just how much I love you. You know, you, you have to try to understand. I'm, uh, I'm very confused. I've, I've, I've been that way for a long time. First, first experiencing that uh, tremendous amount of joy about having a beautiful little baby girl and at the same time experiencing a, an excruciating amount of pain over losing my husband. But I, uh, I had Mike and, and Nancy, you know, and uh, Nicole and Miles to uh, help me. They, they, they offered me a lot of help. They were always there. Yeah, I'm sure Logan helped, too. Yeah, Logan... Logan helped me a lot. Oh, boy. Uh, Draper, do you, um... Do you remember the night of the train crash? I'm sorry, if you don't want to talk about it, come No, wait. no, uh, I do want to talk about it. Come here. I, I want you to know what happened. It, it was a rotten night. I, uh, I remember sitting in the train, looking out the window at the rain beating against it. <laughs> and uh, I said something about it being a good night to, to go to prison. And my whole world turned upside down. kicked out a window. I, I, I told Sam that I was going to go get help. When I got out, though, I, I saw that it was, it was too soon. I mean, no help was coming that, that early, so I tried to get back in to help him. There was a, a tremendous explosion. I mean, it literally knocked me off my feet. It, it, it knocked me unconscious. That's what gave me the concussion, I guess, and, and the bad leg, and that's all I remember. Draper. When they found Sam Dwyer in the train, he was still handcuffed to someone. No, well, that, that's impossible. He let me go to get help. Draper, he was handcuffed to a person we all thought was you. So, so that's why you were sure that I was dead? Yeah, it wasn't until fairly recently that Mike was looking at photographs that were taken the night of the, the, the wreck, and he noticed that something was wrong. The two men were handcuffed by their right hands. Oh. I knew it couldn't be possible. My God. No, no, I know what happened. You see, Sam was in that courtroom day after day, hoping that I'd be exonerated. He told me that. He told me it was hard for him to be the one to take me to prison. And that's why he put the cuffs on another man. Oh. April... I owe my life to Sam Dwyer. Yeah. Hey, listen, you do remember that I told you you were exonerated. <laughs> yeah. I am not only um, alive, <laughs> I am free. Yeah. Oh. Oh, hi, April. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, well, what can I do for you? Um, April, I'd like to talk to you for a minute. It's kind of important. Sure, what is it? Well, uh, can we talk outside? I'd hate to take you away from Draper, but it's that's, personal. That, that, that's okay, oh, honey. I'm sure. a terrible headache. I'm going to rest. Okay. I'll be here when you get back. Take it easy. Yeah. Oh, it's oh. 
Emily Michaels. She's decided that life isn't worth living, so she's out on the ledge threatening to jump. Oh, my God, no. Look, everybody's been trying to get through to her, and it's not helping. Well, 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 what do you want me to do? Well, we think that maybe because you know her, you might be able to get through to her. It's oh worth God. a try. Uh, sure. Uh, where is she? Oh, great. Come on. We don't have much time. Well, if you don't think that now is the time to travel, then maybe we ought to take long weekends and save vacation for when the weather gets cold. Well, that might be the most practical solution. It's not that I don't trust leaving the practice in Cliff's hands, so, but right now our caseload is very heavy. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess I'll just file these away for future reference. Good morning. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. How are you? Okay. Hey, what are you two planning to do, skip town? Well, we felt that we'd put off planning our vacation long enough, so we just decided to uh, put it off again. <laughs> what are you doing up so early, Kelly? Well, there was a short in the lighting system last night. The electrician's going to be at the Unicorn bright and early this morning to see if he can put it back together again. And guess who was nominated to open it up for him? <laughs> How'd the show go last night? And uh, would you try to be reasonably modest? <laughs> A couple of more nights like last night, and my act might have a very limited engagement. Oh, what happened? Didn't it go well? Well, me and the puppets just couldn't focus our concentration on the new routine. I had something else on her mind. Are you still upset about the discussion we had last night? I just wish Mom and Dad hadn't told you what happened in Rome. Kelly, they just wanted us to understand the pressure you've been under. I realize that, but all I'm trying to do is forget the whole mess. It's a little difficult for your parents to. I never meant to be such a heartache to them. Their heartache is the fact that you ran away because of that incident. They miss you terribly. And don't you think I miss them? I just couldn't stay in Rome. Kelly, what happened between you and that girl is over and done with. By running away, you're just punishing your parents. You've got to realize that you're the number one priority in their lives, and they want you with them, regardless of the consequences. I'm not worth the trouble. Now you're being hard on yourself, Kelly. <sighs> Look, I... That's just the way I've chosen to deal with it, and that's it, okay? Well, you should think about it. <sighs> Look, uh, you have to excuse me. I, I really have to get a move on. Don't you really have some coffee? Or... I'll get them. Hello. No, no, you didn't wake us up. Uh, just a minute, I'll put her on. Nancy, it's Joe Peterson. The night desk. Thank you, honey. Yes, hello, Joe. What can I do for you? Hmm? At the amusement park last night? A shooting. Well, was anyone hurt? Oh, there's got to be a mistake. You're sure? Yeah. Thanks. Sounds like there was more excitement at the amusement park last night than uh, just the roller coaster. Do you have to go out and do a follow-up story on it, Nancy? Mike. Draper. Draper's alive. me after what I did to you. Because I care about you, Emily. I care about you very much. Please believe me. You should be telling me to jump. You should want to. And I'm begging you to come inside. Please, Emily, there's nothing to be gained by this. Come on. There's nothing to be lost. Sure, that's right now. How about the roof? There's two guys up there. She's gonna lower one down, but if she sees him first, we may lose her. How much more time they're gonna need? Five minutes, ten minutes. I hope April can keep her calm. It's been a terrible time for all of us, Emily. But things will get better. I, I promise you they'll get better. Better for you. For all of us. Emily, look at me. Look at me. They were friends. Believe me, nothing has changed now. 
Everything has changed. I love him, April. Don't you realize that? Do you want another woman around who loves your husband? Emily, if you, if you really do love him, if you do love Draper, please don't hurt him. Not like this. What about me? I'm, do you want to hurt me anymore? I've hurt you already. And I'm trying desperately to understand everything that's happened. Believe me, please don't make it any more difficult. Emily, if, if you do this, don't you understand? Draper and I will feel responsible. We will. We'll feel guilty for the rest of our lives. Is that what you want? I just want to die. And I want you to live. Draper wants you to live. He cares for you, Emily. Did, did he tell you that? Yeah. We'll be your friends. We'll both be your friends. No, no, you won't want me alone around knowing how I feel about him. I won't have anyone. I lost my mother. And I lost my father. And now I've lost the man I thought was my husband. I'm alone. And it's almost like being dead. Emily, been... don't, no, please. Listen, you, you wait there a minute, okay? You, you wait there just one minute. I'll be right This is, this is Mrs. Scott. Oh, Mrs. Scott, have you heard anything? Yes, listen, I'm with both of them, and I'm at Monticello General Hospital. Hospital? Oh, good heavens. What happened? Are they, are they all right? Molly, listen to me. There's no time to explain. Listen to me very carefully. I want you to take Julia down to Mrs. Charles' apartment, and then I want you to get in the car, and I want you to come over here immediately. Do you understand? I want you to hurry. Okay. Bye-bye. Come on in. Nancy. Mike. Shoot. Shoot. Oh God, my God. God. How good it is to see the two of you. <laughs> so many people have missed you. I can't tell you what I'm feeling right now, Draper. Oh, I can imagine, Mike. Not only do we have your back, but it proves that there really is justice after all. Oh, Draper, I just... I can't oh. believe Yes, I can. Oh. I can. You know, apart from the fact that you were found at the, the amusement park, we have no idea what happened these last six months. It's quite a story. I mean, when I tell you about it, you're not going to believe me, but it's all true. <laughs> well, it might be best if we uh, put off hearing it for a while. Uh, until you're stronger. You do look tired, Draper, and uh, the nurse made a point of telling us not to stay too long. Yeah, and there's plenty of time to talk. All right. But before you leave, maybe you could help me out with a, with an explanation. About what? All the noise. I mean, all the raised voices in the hall, all the running around. And, and, and just a little while ago, I heard sirens outside the building. I mean, what the heck is going on? Okay, if you're not thinking about yourself, think about the other people you're going to hurt then, Emily. What are those men doing down there with that net? Look, they want to help you. They want you to live. I don't want to be saved. Why don't they understand that? Emily, look, I know you're upset. I understand that. But I really don't believe that you don't want to live. Oh, you're wrong. And I'm going to show you just how wrong you are. No, Emily! No, 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 no. Wait, I've got it! Oh, God, I'm sorry. Emily, listen. Emily, I, I want to talk to you. Remember? Remember before how you told me that Nobody, nobody cares, nobody loves you. That's right. It's not true. Molly cares, Emily. Molly loves you. And she's coming here to talk to you. She's no. on her way right now. No, I don't she's... want her to see me like this. No, I don't want to see no, anyone. Please. 
like a daughter to me, my little daughter. Please, now, I'm begging you. Come on in. Come back inside. I'll take care of you. I swear I will. saw her come alive the way she did, well, he, he was afraid of what would happen to her if, well, if Kirk Michaels left her again. Draper, you, you realize that Emily took it very hard when, when you left. Yeah, she was in pretty bad shape when she came into the hospital. I thought maybe you and I could get out and talk to her together. Draper, I think there's something I have to tell you about Emily, something that happened shortly after she arrived at the hospital. What? Well, it turns out... Oh, my God, it's true. You are back from the dead. When I heard the news, I couldn't believe it till I saw it with my own eyes. Draper, it is so good to see you. When I found out about the train wreck, I okay. cried and cried. I don't know who was more despondent, me or your wife. Raven, I think you better leave. Visiting is restricted to family. I'm Draper's stepsister. That makes me family, doesn't it? I cannot believe that you are alive and you're back among those that love you. Raven, Draper needs his rest. Can you imagine how everyone felt when they found out that you were not buried in your own grave? Well, I felt good. <laughs> I bet. Of course, April didn't know anything about the autopsy. Logan felt Raven. I don't think Draper wants to hear about all that now. Wait a second. What is she talking about, autopsy? What about Logan? When Logan found out that you were still alive... Logan he... did not know that Draper was alive. Questions were raised as to whether or not it was your body in the grave, so they exhumed it, performed an autopsy. Only then did they know that it was not your body. He was still presumed dead, having drowned in the river, and that's why your body was missing. But why didn't Logan tell you about the autopsy? Because Logan did not want me to get my hopes up. He didn't want me to sit around and start waiting for you to come home, and apparently he wasn't the only person who felt that way. Nicole, Miles, Mike, Nancy, and other people thought the same thing. Of course, thing. there were a lot of personal reasons, too. Now, hang on, Raven. Logan knew what he was doing. Oh, he certainly did. Yeah, he used good common sense. Honey, I would have done exactly the same thing. Draper, you haven't changed a bit. You're still 100% loyal. You cannot believe that Logan could possibly change. How dare you criticize Logan when you took the same situation and used it for your own selfish purposes? Who, me? 
Logan felt very strongly about protecting me from all the speculation, and Raven was very well aware of that. I felt you had a right to know. He is your husband. Raven made a bargain with, uh, with Logan, said that she would keep her big mouth shut if he did not call me as a witness on Jamie's custody trial. It's a very long Look, story. I did not want to get into this nonsense. I wanted to come say hello to my friend. Well, your welcome is wearing very thin. Draper, I am very happy that you are alive and well. And I'm sure my mother will feel the same way when I go tell her she's right down below two floors, you know? Nadine. What's she doing here? Oh, she came here to have some tests. When I found out about it, I rushed right up here to see you. On your broomstick? Very cute. Look, I will come back, and I will bring a bottle of very good champagne, and we'll have a proper celebration. Don't bother. I'll be back. I may feel sorry for that woman, but I still hate her. Wow. I can see some things around here haven't changed. I think, what did she mean uh, about, about Logan and all that? Oh, well, it's true. Logan didn't want to tell me about the autopsy. He felt it was better not to. He and Deborah even went up to Graham County to see what had happened. No, no, I, I mean, what did, what did she have in mind when she said something about personal reasons? Oh, uh, oh, I, I, I don't think she meant anything. It was just some more, you know, Raven's nonsense. <laughs> Logan, I'm going to Monticello General to visit Nadine. Oh. Why don't you lie down for a time? You really could use some rest. Uh, I'm not tired. You're past the point of being tired. On the brink of exhaustion, if you ask me. Geraldine, I'm fine. I'm a little keyed up, but I'll be okay. That was an incredible experience you had last night. Oh, boy, was it ever. That chase through the amusement park was... Right out of the movies. I'm referring to what happened after the chase. You should have seen him, Geraldine. April and Draper were... Well, they were probably too much in shock to fully appreciate the drama of the moment, but they were so happy. So now I guess they'll live happily ever after. Logan, I know you're extremely happy for both of them. But I know, too, that you have some very deep feelings about what's happened. Oh, Geraldine. My best friend and a terrific lady here. Back together again. What more could I ask for? If you feel that you'd like to talk about it, I'm here. And if not, I'll understand. Nothing to talk about, Geraldine. I wish you wouldn't worry about me. You're asking me to do the impossible. I can't just sit by impassively and watch you suffer. I love you, you know. Thank you. That helps. Thank you very much. I think it goes without saying that I'm thrilled about Draper's return and the reunion of two people who love each other very much. But I'm also aware of the position this places you in. After all, you just can't turn off your emotions the minute a situation changes. No, you can't, unfortunately. I'll get over it, though. I have to. Don't I? Emily, you just can't stay like this. Oh, please say something. The worst is over now. Please believe me when I tell you that. We can start putting the pieces back together. It's just you and me and everything is going to be fine. Oh, Emily, please don't cut me out like this. I love you, and I want to do everything I can to help you. Why can't you talk to me about what happened, about how you feel? I'll do anything you want, Emily. Just talk to me. Oh, Doctor. Doctor, you must do something to help her. I've tried, and I have tried, but she will not say so much as one word. I don't even think she knows I'm here. I'm Dr. Barnes. 
And you are... Uh, uh, Molly Sherwood, doctor. She hasn't said a word till, since she came off the window ledge. What's the matter with her? Are you uh, Mrs. Michael's nearest relative? We're not related at all, not by blood anyway, but for ten years I was her father's housekeeper and Miss Emily's very good friend. I see. Has her uh, family been notified? But she has no family, doctor. No one to take care of her but me. <sighs> well, in that case, our uh, alternatives are narrowed considerably. What do you mean? Well, I've done a workup on Mrs. Michaels. The patient is evidently suffering from severe emotional trauma. She's going to need intensive psychiatric observation. I'm afraid with no family to uh, arrange for her care and treatment in a private facility, we're going to have to rely on the welfare services to arrange for her placement. You're talking about sending her away? Locking her up in some sort of asylum? Well, your friend will be sent to a state-run mental health facility. She'll be kept here while the paperwork is being processed. You'll be able to visit her. Well, why can't I take care of her? Emily can stay with me and I'll bring her in for treatment. Whatever you say, doctor, please don't, don't put her away in an institution, please. Well, I wish it were possible to treat Mrs. Michaels in that manner, but unfortunately her condition warrants nothing less than hospitalization and round-the-clock supervision by people who are trained to handle conditions like hers. Oh, but Emily's just in a state of shock and she'll calm down soon and be fine. I know she will. I wish that were the case, Mrs. Sherwood. You really haven't told me what's wrong with her, doctor. Well, I've diagnosed the patient as suffering from a form of schizophrenia. Oh. She seems to have uh, slipped into a, what we call a catatonic state. Her immobility, her obvious negativism, her refusal to communicate, these are classic symptoms. You just have to make her well again, doctor. I mean, you just have to. We'll do the best we can. I promise you that. How long will that take? I'm afraid I can't give you a definite timetable. How long Mrs. Michaels will remain this way is almost impossible to predict. not very well at all, I'm afraid. Can I go in and see her? The doctor's with him now. I mean, even if you did, she wouldn't know you were there. Why not? It's as if Emily has locked herself away in a world all her own. She doesn't even know anything that's going on around her. The doctor called it a catatonic state. Oh, my Lord. If I lose Emily... Especially like this, I don't know what I'll do. Uh, Molly, Emily's had a shock, and, and she's reacted to it severely, but, uh, well, I'm sure given time, she'll be back to her old self, but believe me. But you didn't see her. So still, she doesn't say a word. The doctors will help her. They'll make her well. Oh, I hope to God you're right. I love her, you know, Mrs. Scott. I, I couldn't love her more as if she was my own child. I care for her, too, Molly. You know that. I care about her very much. You would... You would have to what she, she did to, to you? What Emily did was bring my husband back to me. Yes, but she kept you away from him for so long. Well, she didn't... She didn't know, and... Besides, I know Draper, and I can't really blame Emily for falling in love with him. You... She really did believe it was her Kirk come back to her at first. She didn't mean you any harm. You do know that. Yeah, yeah, but uh, when Draper's life was on the line, Emily told him the truth. She told him the truth knowing full well that she'd lose him. So you see, Emily saved Draper's life not only for him, but for me too. If only she didn't have to pay this awful price. Oh, only the truth had come out sooner. You told Emily, Molly, didn't you? Yes. Well, I didn't tell her soon enough that... The day morning that I saw your wedding picture, I, I was just so confused that I... Molly, I'm not blaming you. I'm not really blaming anyone. There's no one person to blame. It's just something that happened. And Emily's father? Well, I... I guess I can forgive him, too, for what he did. Besides, the man is dead. What good is my anger going to do now? 
Yes, he is gone, and, and Emily's alone. I, I, I'll uh, pack my bag and get out of your apartment just as soon as I can. What are you talking about? What do you mean? Oh. I can't imagine you and your husband want me to go on working for you after all this. Why not? I don't see that you've done anything wrong. Maybe it just took you a while to make the right decision. Oh, it, it, it doesn't seem right. Well, is it right for you to just leave me like this and deprive me of a very good housekeeper, not to mention what Julia would say if she knew you left her? Well, I mean, just having me around, it would be a reminder. A reminder of someone who helped bring my husband back to me. Well, maybe... Maybe you just see how he feels about it. I think I know Draper. I think he would feel badly if you left. So if you'd like to stay, we'd like to have you. You decided to show up, Stoner. Get changed to do some stretching. Your lesson starts in ten minutes. Look, um, Gavin, I hate to do this to you on such short notice, but I just came out to tell you I gotta be a last-minute scratch. I came here in early for you, you know. Um, Wiley, I really appreciate it, but, uh, man, I'm just too beat to work out today, you know? Uh, you look like you had a rough night. Yeah, what was supposed to be an eight-hour shift stretched out into about 18, I think, uh, I don't think these legs want to do anything except go home and soak in a nice hot tub with the rest of my body. You were out all night playing cops and robbers, huh? Yeah, we put the ribbon on a case that had been a thorn in our side for a long time. I guess, uh, guess all the hours were worth it, you know? You got your man. Nah, that we did, yeah. I'm feeling pretty good about it, too. <clears throat> Unless you cancel 24 hours in advance, I still have to charge for my services. Hey, I told okay. you that. It's okay. I will bring a check next time I stop by. I just, you know, I got to get out of here and go home. You know, I, I haven't seen my wife in so long. I bet she's forgotten what I look like. <laughs> well, don't worry about the check, Calvin. Just go home and we'll reschedule. Okay. okay. Thanks. I'll, uh, I'll call you when I wake up, which will probably be in a couple of days. <laughs> Take care of yourself. All right. All right. Later. Who's here? Hey, long time no see. If you came to watch a class, I'm afraid you're out of luck. The next group doesn't come till one. Oh, well, that's good, because I came here to use the bar. Oh, you don't do so much as a plie in here until you're well again. I'm fine. Miles examined... I mean, Dr. Kavanaugh examined me this morning and said that I am the picture of health. Now, how do I know he really gave you the green light and you're not just here to work out your frustrations about being grounded? You don't believe me. Oh, you can call and ask for yourself if you like. Uh, his number is... No, five, it's five, okay. Five. It's okay. I believe you. Welcome back. Thank you. It's nice to be back. Now, you get a light workout. Nothing strenuous. To tell you the truth, I couldn't do anything strenuous right now. I've been away from this place so long that... Well, I've got to get back into shape. Now, does this mean you start your double life again? Dancer by day, waitress by night? I'm not going back to the unicorn for a while yet. But I can't stay away too much longer. Well, then your guest stay at the Cavanaugh's must be almost over, so you're going to have to worry about rent money. No, I'm not leaving on Miles or Nicole either. I thought that was part of the deal. That as soon as you were nursed back to health, it, you were gone. It was. But my sister made a very generous offer. One I'd be a fool to turn down. What's that? Well, she said I could stay there as long as I made some kind of contribution to the household. Ah, that sounds like a sweet deal. It's a wonderful deal. Yeah, I figured it would be just a matter of time until Sis broke down and gave you a free ride. A free ride? You've got to be kidding. It's anything but that. Well, it's, you certainly won't have to worry about being thrown out into the street every first of the month. <laughs> I don't think you heard me right the first time. I'm going to pay for my room and board, and I'm also going to help them around the house. Okay, okay, cool down. I don't like your insinuations, Gavin. Now save that energy for your dancing, okay? Okay. Well, maybe I could do that if you put a record on. Your wish is my command.
I figured since you were so into making deals, maybe you'd make one with me, too. What kind of a deal? How would you like me to give you dancing lessons for nothing? You can't be serious. Well, it would certainly help you to make the, your, your room and board money. Yeah, it would, considering the prices you charge. It's a genuine bona fide offer. I don't know. Nobody does anything for nothing, Gavin. Just what's in this for you? Nah, don't worry about that now. Come on, what do you say? The offer's up in five seconds. Four, three, two... All right, all right. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, if I had not seen him with my own two eyes, I would never have believed it. But there he was in the flesh. I'd be very interested in hearing the details about Draper's reappearance. Well, so will I. And as soon as I leave here, I'm going to find out. Knowing you, I can expect a full report within the hour. <laughs> True. Can you imagine how thrilled Ansel's going to be when he finds out? It will be a shock for him. He spent the past six months thinking his only son was dead. I'll call him later when I'm alone. I'll call for you if you want. No. I'll take care of that. Be my guest. You're not going to get much of a rise out of him, though. Ansel never did care much whether Draper was alive or dead. That was a very cruel thing to say, Raven. It's true. And if you, you can't say anything pleasant, don't say anything at all. My, 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 aren't we in a foul temper today? We are not the least bit happy about being here. Mother, you are the royal guest. This is the Alexander Wing. You're going to get the red carpet treatment. I would appreciate that if this were a hotel, but it's a hospital. And I'm a little more than anxious about these tests, and I can't wait to get out of here. Look, don't worry. They're going to take the test, they're going to find out nothing is wrong with you, and they're going to send you home. And I'll be right here to hold your hand. Oh, dear. Probably an intern waiting to turn me into some sort of guinea pig. Oh, will you relax? The sooner you get this over with, the better. Geraldine. Hello, Nadine. I hope you're feeling all right. Raven. You have a lot of nerve coming in here. I have a very dear friend who's in the hospital. Will you? I thought it only proper that I pay her a visit. Will you please leave? Your presence upsets my mother greatly. Can't you get it through your head? She does not want to see you. Like it or not, she's going to. Right now. 